Hello, welcome to this tech tip provided by Imaginet Technologies. My name is Rusty Belcher and we'll be taking a look at the old 2D to 3D tool for Autodesk Inventor today. I say it's an old tool, it's actually been around for quite a long time. It's always been available at the Autodesk Labs and I'm up here on the Labs page. I was actually shocked a few months ago when I went to download this tool for 2013 and I discovered that it was retired in the 2012 release. Well, just recently, Autodesk has re-released the 2D to 3D tool for Inventor 2013. So I certainly want you to be aware of that. I'm going to show you how this tool works in the video, but I'm also going to ask you a favor. If you like the 2D 3D tool, we need to let Autodesk know that we like it and we want to continue using it. Uh, if you check the update information here, you'll find a link to Scott Shepard's blog. It's live in the lab. And he makes some very good points about the fact that, you know, this is one of the older tools that has been available at Autodesk Labs for quite a while. And Autodesk really is looking for some feedback as to how, what the future of the 2D to 3D tool is. So if you really like the tool like I do, I would encourage you to contact uh, Scott, let him know what you think. Uh, there are links available up on his blog via email, Facebook, Twitter, uh, or even a, a blog. So now I want to show you how the 2D to 3D tool actually works. I'm actually in my Inventor application and the first thing I want to do is open up an AutoCAD drawing. This is an AutoCAD drawing of some profiles of an F-16 aircraft. I have the front view, the top view, and the right side view. I'm going to highlight these and I'm going to right click and select copy. Now I want to start a new part file. So I'm going to be uh, starting a new part based on my default inventor template and I'm going to sketch on the default XY plane. I'm going to right click and I'm going to select paste and this is going to paste that information into my first sketch. Now I'm going to select finish and I want to share with you a little hiccup I've seen with the 2D 3D tool for 2013. Right now the 2D 3D tool, I have it loaded. It is supposed to be lit up and ready for the base sketch. But for some reason in this release, it doesn't work exactly the way it has in the past. What I found is, or what I have to do, is save the file. So I'm just going to call this F16. I'll call it F16A. We'll go ahead and save that. And I'm going to close it. And then I'm going to reopen it. And as soon as I reopen it, the base view will light up uh, for the 2D to 3D tool. So it's just a little hiccup. So the way the tool actually works is you select a base view. When you select the base view tool, you have this dialog box and a yellow cube will appear. You select the face of the cube that you want to correspond to your base view. And then you select the geometry for your base view and click OK. You then select your projected views. You'll see the dialog here. Uh, you just simply come in and select the other geometry that makes up your projected views. Click OK and you'll see that those views are aligned to your base view automatically. Now for this example, I don't need to continue using Sketch 1. As a matter of fact, you can come over and delete it. You don't need to preserve it. It actually creates supporting sketches for each of the views that you have selected. Now, the views are aligned in space so that we can use the extrude command to start extracting the final shape that we need. I'm going to start the extrude command, and my first extrusion is going to be from this front view. I'll simply click OK. I'm going to start the extrusion command again. This time I want to change my direction and change my type of extrusion to intersect. And I'll finish up by doing another extrusion with the third shape. Again, I'll change my direction and set it to intersect. And here you can see the complex shape we developed with using the 2D 3D tool of the fuselage for the airplane. Now I'm not finished. I actually want to go over and turn on the three sketches because I have some additional features. Inventor now allows me to model with the multi-body workflow so I can create additional bodies the same way as I did with the fuselage. So I want to create another body of the main wing. So I'm going to start the extrusion here. 
we'll send it down and this time I want it to be a new solid. I'll repeat the extrude command and select the other profile. This time I need to go over and select the solid that I want to work with. Then I can change my direction and mark it as an intersection. And we're just going to repeat that process for the tail section. That'll be a new solid going down. And then we'll do a secondary extrusion here. Select the solid. Make sure we get the direction right and that it's an intersect. And finally, one more time with the tail section. We'll do a new solid and get the direction correct. And then we'll extrude these two shapes here. We'll select our solid, get the direction and the intersection. I'll go over and take the visibility off of the sketch and here you can see my finished product. This complex shape was very, very easy to do utilizing the 2D to 3D tool that's available now for Autodesk Inventor 2013. So if this is the first time you're seeing the 2D to 3D tool for Autodesk Inventor, I hope you've enjoyed the functionality and I hope you go up to Autodesk Labs and download it for your installation. But if you're an existing fan of this application, I would encourage you to contact Autodesk and let them know what you think of the application. Maybe you can take to Twitter with the hashtag 2D to 3D and let them know what you think. Thank you.